Protesters in Kenya are demanding that the government save the lives of women and end femicide now. More than 500 Kenyan women have been killed by men. That was between 2016 and 2023, according to Amnesty International. Campaigners say things are getting worse. Now, in a moment, I'll talk to an activist who says that 21 women were murdered in January alone. The UN says gender stereotypes, discrimination of women and girls, and harmful social norms are to blame for the rise. Thousands of people recently marched on the streets of Nairobi and other parts of Kenya, calling for an end to the violence. Our correspondent Felix Maringa filed the following report from Muranga County, just outside Nairobi. In the village of Gatanga, they are saying her name. Grace Wangari is being buried today. She's a victim of the recent wave of femicide murders in the country. She was stabbed by her boyfriend and bled to death. Her mother says it is unbearable to be burying her only daughter. She was just 24 years old. The anguish I feel is beyond words. She left her children behind. Grace paid her children school fees and bought clothes for them. It would have been completely different if my daughter were still alive and we could visit her in the hospital, knowing the perpetrator is in jail. Sadly, my daughter is no more. Grace is one of more than 10 women and girls who have been killed in the last two weeks. Stop killing women! Stop killing women! They are demanding an end to the killing of women in Nairobi. Women's organization and protesters from all over the country marched through the streets of the Kenyan capital and other major towns on January 27th, demanding that the authorities act swiftly and stop the wave of killings. Women are the majority in this country. While we are still marginalized in the political, social and economic structure. So we are saying we are tired and that's why today we are marching to say end femicide and women voice matter, our lives matter. We hope that the government can come in and help solve this issue that we have not been able to solve since 2019. We had another march just like this in 2019, but nothing has happened yet, so why not? The government must come in and help us as women. I'm here as a man because my country is not safe, my, my sisters are not safe, my wife is not safe, my children, my daughters are not safe. I'm here because the nation is not safe. Men are also taking the lead in trying to put an end to gender-based violence. Crispy Nocheng has been training fellow men on ending GBV for the last four years. He says cultural practices like female genital mutilation show the depths of Kenya's pervasive discrimination. We must stop, for example, the FGM issues. We must stop the issues of, 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 of demeaning the women. We must also stop how we view and perceive the women, even including the education. So there are so many contributing factors, but more so, I want to t tell you the issues of you know the, the cultures that have been that are, that are, that have been we've grown up with we must identify this one is wrong this one is not right this is not adding value it's not time to to work to work to work to work as an individual but as a team thousands of men and women have marched in solidarity with the femicide victims the rallying call has been the need to stop the killing of women and girls activists did not have any kind words for the government of Kenya that they feel has done very little in the wake of the recent killings Amnesty International says there were more than 500 femicide deaths between 2016 and January 2024. Male champions for women's rights like Crispin are calling for solidarity with women in curbing this menace. Let the men sustain this, have ways of training boys to understand the importance of peace in, in the, at the family level, at the workplace and every place. Let men actually champion this. Men should talk to their fellow men. Men should educate their fellow men. I think men tend to listen to men more. So if men talk to their, to their friends, to fellow men, I think this will stop. The protests are over for now and Grace Ongari has been laid to rest. Many hope that this will be a turning point and this growing movement can save the lives of Kenyan women like Grace. 
For more on this, let's bring in Jerry Migui from Usukimiye, Kenya. That's a non-profit organization trying to end sexual and gender-based violence. Hello and welcome to the program, Jerry. Uh, for years, Kenyans have been telling the government to tackle femicide. Is there any sign at all that the authorities are doing anything to save the lives of women like Grace Wangari? Um, I have to say no, uh, because simply because we have 20 women who have died in one month, actually 21 as of yesterday, and those numbers are alarming, and the fact that um, nothing has been done to expedite even the cases that are currently in court where perpetrators have been arrested shows you that there's a laxity uh, from the government to actually perform their duties of protection of women from such incidents. Mm. I find that um, really strange to say the least because you know the constitution is very clear on the right to life and the law says that a killer must be punished. Are the male perpetrators being brought to justice? It doesn't seem like you think they are. Um, Majority of the times, I, I have to be very honest, majority of the time, once a perpetrator commits the crime, most of them wind up running away. And you find that there is not a concerted effort to actually bring them back to book. And if there is, and when they are arrested, uh, the, case, the court case takes very, very long for it to, to even come to court, for it to be heard, for it to be listened to, and even for it to come to judgment. I will give you a very good example. In 2019, we did another total shutdown march. And in this march, one of the people that, uh, one of the women who had been killed, Dr. Ivy Wangeshi, who was um, killed in Eldoret, her court case got into judgment last year in November. That is four and a half years down the line. That is when we were able to even get um, the man, the perpetrator, uh, to be arrested. So what, what one of the asks we keep on asking the government is the the people need to see that something is happening. And one of the ways in which people need to see is access to justice. And access to justice should also include the speedily trial of cases like this. Mm. And I, I, I remember, remember you've mentioned before that um, you want the government to treat this as a national emergency. You believe that would go a long way, won't it? Yes, it would. Uh, because this is a crisis. For example, right now, if 20 women uh, or if 20 people in Kenya were dying out of a disease and every one day, uh, every one day uh, a person would die, I believe the government would have already put in measures for a pandemic, right? But even now, the president of Kenya has not said anything regarding the current crisis and the fact that we took to the streets to actually tell the government, you need to listen to us. And this is not the first time we've done this. And we have put our petitions to the legislature. We've given our petition to the executive as well as the judiciary. It means you're ignoring. And the more you ignore, we are now telling you from 2016 till 2023, over 500 women have died due to femicide. Mm. I, I don't know what else constitutes a, a national crisis more than that. Mm. And while all this is going on, you have some people blaming women, victim blaming for the violence done to them. I mean, what do you say to those critics? Um, you are dead. Can you imagine somebody telling you to justify why you were killed or telling you uh, the people who are now alive that you need to be safe? How safe are you going to be when you don't know that the person you're going to meet or your husband or your lover is going to kill you? Uh, so that is not only victim blaming, you're also looking at gaslighting, really, because we are telling you women are being killed and you're telling us women are being killed because they they took our money, uh, you know, they're eating men's sweat. So the, the, the disparity in that conversation is, is, is crazy. So the only thing I need to say is people need to learn and actually have empathy because when you blame the victim, and I think it was one of the placards that really got the attention of people, mm. is that when you blame the victim, you affirm the murderers. And one of the ways, the lenses in which this, um, uh, these femicide cases are being looked at are being looked at from the side of the victim and never the perpetrator. Mm. We talk about the victims, we talk about who they were, their habits, and what could have caused them to be killed. We never really talk about the perpetrators. You'd never see the perpetrators being platformed. Or right. why did that person do that? We don't even know the names of the perpetrators, even. 
Right, right. Uh, strong point from you there. Um, your organization, you describe it as a safe place for women. What help can women get when they need it? Uh, we offer, first and foremost, we offer psychosocial support. We offer psychological support. We offer safe shelters for women. We run those ones. Uh, we also run other programs that uh, go around women empowerment. And uh, for children, we do have a feeding, a daily school feeding program. Okay, great. Um, it's, it's, I always say thumbs up to, to you and your team for all that you're doing to try to keep uh, women safe. Um, I, I cannot let you go without asking this because it's been on my mind. Uh, when we talk about men being the perpetrators of femicide, I want to find out what role can men in general play to help fight this evil? I, I, I will keep on saying I, I want to hear the voices of the good men. Uh, to drown out the voices that we keep on hearing. And one of the beautiful things that happened in this particular match is that a lot, we had a lot of men show up and, and come and be in solidarity. So we need, you know, there is no way we're ending this conversation unless we include men. I believe positively that we need to hear the voices of men in solidarity, joining together with us in, in demanding justice and in asking other men who do not understand to possibly get them to understand why we feel like this is a topic of such magnitude. Right. Very well noted. Jerry Migui, Executive Director of Sikimye, Kenya. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too.